I think a lot with uh, just soldiers that, like go downtown, like I'd be in, in a, just a regular line unit. Go downtown here, and you see soldiers down, you know, down in the bars and the clubs and all that. There's no, nothing wrong with being down there, and, but you just see them out of control, just really, really intoxicated. And we saw him early on in the night. I mean, I don't know, it's probably nine, ten o'clock. He was down there with some other people, just having some drinks, and uh, just stopped by, said hello, whatever, and then uh, went through the night. We went around to where we were going and seen our buddies and stuff, and then ran back into him a couple more times. And then at the end of the night, you know, everybody, all the bars closed about the same time. We're outside um, Broadway. And, Kid comes back by us and uh, his car is parked in one of the little alley slots and uh, he's walking to his car and he can't, car can't really walk. He's stumbling around. You don't know him really that well to be like, hey man, come on, just give me your keys. You can't talk him into it. Because a lot of times you'll see guys get back to where they're going, jump in somebody else's car and then go back and pick the car up anyway. So, and, hey, don't lay into him. You know, he ain't drove his car yet. I don't think there is a real regulation on you stepping in and get somebody drinking and driving. He could luck out and get through the gate and them not know he was intoxicated. He probably wouldn't remember he saw us that night, or maybe we had talked to him. I wouldn't I wouldn't ever go as far as making that your sole purpose of walking around just looking for deficiencies on people. I, I think a lot of soldiers, if they seen an NCO, especially E7 or E6, they would probably just not even say nothing just because they're scared.